There's two things that were important when I started this blog, two ingredients for the recipe of success. One is daily, to do it on a daily basis so you can keep that conversation going. At the time, many other blogs were doing it once a week, once every other week, but I knew uh, as, a, as a daily print journalist that the way that you keep the conversation going is you make sure it's a daily conversation, but you can change the conversation over the five, six, seven days, but it does need to, it does need to be a daily conversation. The second ingredient, which is really important, is surprise. That you really need to make it so that the reader is drawn back to just see what in heaven's name is up there that particular day. So the more surprising and out of the box I could be, on a smart level, I don't mean surprise and shock for the sake of it, but just a different form of music or an articulation about something else that is a surprise would, would keep people uh, interested. There's so much material to write about. The question is finding the stuff that people don't know about and giving them what I call a robust, historical, interesting snapshot read of why that particular artist is important. I know from experience what artists will evoke the most response or the most readership. Which artists will cause other people to say, hey, read this or check this out. Um, among those artists, I think the most popular is probably Bill Evans. I would say Maynard Ferguson is huge, Stan Kenton, a lot of West Coast jazz, um, and obscure artists, artists that people didn't know about. Uh, I remember when I wrote about Don Sleet, no one knew who that trumpet player was. The, the most interesting thing is when I'm able to cause somebody to say, whoa, I never even heard of this guy, but he's on Riverside. You know, how did I miss this person? There's a sense of gratification. I get these emails saying, well, thanks so much for turning me on to this particular artist or that particular artist. So for me, it's always finding someone who's off the radar screen, off the beaten path. I'll never, I'll almost never write about an album everybody knows. Because I'm always researching, um, I'm always finding things that are of interest to me. It's a, it's a simple formula. What's of interest to me, what's a mind blower to me, will, will be mind blowers to those who like to read me. So, so long as I'm true to my gut, and so long as I'm writing about things that actually blow my mind, then, it, then those, those artists will blow other people's minds. And that's critical to maintain that taste level, to stick to what is interest, of interest to me, what I find exciting, what sounds right to my ear, and conversely, to also not write about things that I don't like. I will never write about music that I don't like. So when the record companies send me dozens and dozens of things every day, I will never write about something if I don't like it, and I tell them that. You know, I have massive respect for artists. Art's really hard. It's very hard to create music, and it's even harder to create good music, and almost impossible to create great music. So if you're in the art business and you're creating music, it's hard enough to do what you're doing. And if it's not great what you're doing, I find it's, it's uncomfortable for me to put down anybody who's trying. I'd rather celebrate those who, whose music I really like and, and just leave everything else alone. I know that in our, in our digital video age, people don't like to read. They, they do read, uh, but half the time they don't have the time that they like to sit down and do the kind of reading they need to. Um, I think people's eyes are getting older and it's, it's, it's harder for them to read. And it's just, it's just a, a more tedious process. As a result, anybody who's reading me, I know from the get-go, they don't want to be there. Even, even though they may want to read me and even though the subject matter is right up their alley, there's something inside of them that's wanting to bail out right away. So I have an extra task of holding them and making it as enjoyable and as fun and as interesting as possible throughout so that it's a story. I, I always want to tell a story so that someone can go from the top and be dragged all the way to the bottom and never feel as though they spent more than a minute reading what I've written. Any time a reader is wondering what something means or something hasn't been explained, the writer's failed. And that's, that's the same for me, you know, with, with anything that I write. I'm conscious that the reader doesn't want to be there and that I have to work extra hard to be easy and simple so that the reader does stay there. I work seven days a week. Um, I get up at five in the morning. Uh, I swim a mile and a half a day. Uh, so I'm at the pool from about 6.30 to 7.30. Uh, I'm back at my desk at eight and I literally work straight until 11 o'clock at night. 
almost until I can't say anymore. Um, so with a break for, very fast break for lunch. Um, and my emails come in probably six, six or seven every five seconds. It's enormous between the PR material that comes in, editors asking for things, media people getting back to me on things that I'm trying to set up, editors. It's just, it's, it's, it's a batting cage, uh, my email. Um, and when I, even if I go out, even if I go out for an hour to run errands, when I come back, I've got to deal with 60 emails. So um, it's not as glamorous uh, as one would think, but the freedom to write about what I want to write about and write about it in a way that I want to write about it and to listen to music all day long from the time I'm sitting at my desk all day. Um, I, 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 I've always dreamt about doing exactly what I'm doing now. So if you're asking me if it's glamorous, the answer is no. If you're asking me if I'm happy, um, beyond my wildest dreams. Making things interesting and making things dynamic and having a vision for what you want to do and having a very keen sense of your brand and what you want to be known for and how your style needs to evolve so that it's singular and that you're known for something because that's critical today. You must be known for something. You must have a certain style so that when people see your name or, or people read something, they know instantly it must be you. Uh, so you need that sound. Um, so it's not unlike the musicians I write about. You know, the musicians I write about stand out because we know their sound. People who sound like them, they disappeared. Um, so creating your own sound, even in writing, is, is critical. Um, but you also need to know that it's important to um, be able to organize things well, that the art of entertaining isn't necessarily running things down or playing gotcha or outing people all the time, um, that you can be entertaining if you have your own voice. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to give advice and to tell somebody, do what I did, because you can't do what I did anymore. It's just not practical in today's environment. Um, but you can treat writing seriously. And you can take steps to make sure that what you write and how you write um, is as entertaining as possible and is as simple as possible. You need to be aware that the reader today doesn't want to read you. And if you, and if you get them to read you, then you've accomplished not only an amazing feat, meaning that, they've, that you've gotten them to read something, but you got them to read something when they actually didn't want to. Um, so making sure you have a sound, making sure you're entertaining, and write as simply but as fiercely as possible, um, that's critical.